Hello guys and gals, welcome to a new tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be diving into the new Niagara effect system, and we're going to be making a cool effect that will take our character's location, create a particle system around it, and then blow up over time. It's a pretty cool effect, and it's actually not too difficult to put together. Um, so let's hop straight in. We are using version 4.20.2 and if you head to edit and go to plugins, head to FX and then turn on both Niagara and Niagara Extras. Now by default these are turned off so you will have to turn these on manually and when you do the engine will restart and it is usual for the engine to stop loading at about 45%. This is just because it's loading the new plugins and it sometimes takes a little bit of a while. Depends on your system, it could take just a few seconds, it could take a couple of minutes, but it is still loading, so don't close it down. Just let it load and it will, it will catch up. So one of the first things that we're going to discuss is the fact that the systems, um, at the moment anyway, are different to a particle system. If we were to open up a particle system here, you can see we have an emitter. And this is actually a system. If we drop this into the world, it does its thing. And we can add another emitter and another emitter and another emitter if we wanted to. Now, when we right click and go to our new effects menu, we can select a Niagara emitter and we'll call this Dean Emitter. And we can't drag this into the world. The reason we can't drag this into the world is because it's got no system. So the actual particle system has emitters built into the system, whereas with Niagara at the moment anyway, we have to do it manually. So head to effects, go to system, and we'll call this in system. In fact, I'm going to give that a slightly different name. I'm going to put a one on the end just in case. The reason I'm putting a one on the end just in case is because I've been uh, messing around with other systems and I tend to name them all the same thing and then delete them and I don't want to accidentally select the wrong one and then you guys won't be able to follow along so if we open this up nothing's going to be in here if we open up the emitter you can see we have this nice little spray going on uh, one thing that you're going to notice straight away if you hop into this window and drag around um, is that you have a totally different control scheme to anywhere else in the engine don't know why they've done this it's it's ugly and hideous uh, click this little drop down menu turn off orbit mode and you get your old control system back uh, I don't know why they've added a new control system in here. It's 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 so disorientating. You go around doing everything the same way in here, and then you come into one of these things, and you're like, oh, I can't control the thing. Yours is also going to have a background, so head to Window, Preview Scene Settings, and by default, Show Environments turned on. This, for me, it's way too noisy. I can't see this properly, so I turn this off, so it's more like the old particle system. Right, so... Our emitter is going to hold our default values, and the system is going to allow us to change those values based on what we need. So here, we're going to change around our defaults. Because we already know that we're going to be sticking these to the edge of a mesh and then blowing them out, we're not going to need a velocity, so we'll delete velocity. We're also not going to need any acceleration force, because we're going to have these animated in a different way, so we'll delete that. Spawn rate, they're all going to spawn at once attached to our character, so we can delete spawn rate because that spawns them over time. But then underneath emitter update, under this orange, so it's all color-coded for us now, so under orange emitter update, press the little plus and search for burst, which is what you'd use in the old cascade system, but now it's got a slightly different name, it's exactly the same thing. Just head to spawn, count, change this up, and you can see now it's just spawned a bunch all here. Now we're just going to drop down emitter properties under emitter spawn in the orange, uh, no, we're not. In fact, we're going to go to emitter life cycle in the orange. Ignore me. And we're going to set our max loop count to one because we only want this to happen once, once we've spawned it. Um, a zero is an infinite, an infinite loop. We'll just keep going over and over again. So let's see. What else will we change here? Um, under set variables, we're going to go to our sprite size and we're just going to change these between one and two. So we get much smaller dots. 2.5 to 8 is quite large. The, you'll lose a lot of the detail when they spawn on your character's body. Um, so we're going to go for a 1 to 2. We'll compile and apply this. We'll head over into the system real quick. Ooh, let's just drop that back in there. We'll head over to the system real quick, and I'll show you how to bring this in. So close this curves. So what we have here is timeline, and we have select emitter in the timeline, but we have no emitter. So we will add a track, emitter, 
and then we'll pick our emitter and you can see it's brought it in along with all of the defaults that we've created so if you see here we've got value one to two on size and we've got our burst and everything's exactly how we have it in the emitter we're going to want to change a couple more things in the emitter because we're going to need a way to spawn these on our character so to do so we need to get um a reference to our mesh hello dog and the dog's just attacked me i don't um so to do so we're going to need a variable now we can do this through parameters this is going to be a particle uh, variable and if we open this up you can see we've got a bunch here but none of these are what we actually want uh, so particles little plus and our character is always going to be using a skeletal mesh so we'll select skeletal mesh we'll call this particles dot skeletal mesh then control a control c we're just going to copy the name because we're going to need that in a short while and now if we were to click and drag this you can see here where it says set variables it highlights green this is because we can drop this in and it will auto populate a new little menu for us you can see here default mesh is set to none we're going to select our mannequin or whatever you're using for your skeletal mesh here and there you go now we have a reference to a mesh however our particle system doesn't know how to use this so what we need to do is right click head to fx again and this time we're going to give this a module script we're going to call this gene spawn module now call it whatever you want um, just make sure it's something you can find we're going to open this up you're going to have an error that's fine it's just because it hasn't been compiled yet but what we're going to do first is in the module usage click this little drop down all we want is a module and a spawn script so we're going to get rid of everything that isn't spawn script or module now we'll compile these things what we're going to do is head to category and we're going to give this an actual category i'm going to call this dean well dean's category now the reason we're giving this a category name is so that we can find this inside of our emitter so if we go back to the emitter we know that this is a spawn because we've just told this here in this module usage to be a spawn script so in our emitter under particle spawn if we press the little plus you can see now we have dean's category or whatever you've named yours drop this down and you can see here we've got our different modules now this is one from testing earlier but you can see here i've got dean spawn module that's the one we've just created so we'll select that now nothing's happening with this right now at all so what we need to do is we need to create a reference to our particle um uh, variable <laughs> that's what i'm looking for so we're going to click particle make new and then skeletal mesh and we're just going to paste in the name of our variable from earlier this is just so that we know what we're actually working with if we drag out from here now because this is actually a skeletal mesh um, variable type it's going to default everything to skeletal mesh and what we can do is we can get a try coordinate so let's see random try coord and what this is going to do it's going to get the coordinate of a random try from on our mesh's surface then what we need to do from that is if we type ws for world space we can get try position world space plug coord into coord and then we get a position this is going to determine where to spawn a particle over here we can press a little plus here and we can put particle position plug in position and there we have it if we compile this now over in our emitter do, 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 where have we got it our dean spawn module should be working although it's being a little bit of a pain if we got him over here we have dean spawn module let's make sure that we've got everything that we need over here we do did we not compile this we didn't compile it what a dope so once we've compiled it you can see here now it's actually making a little shape of our mesh hooray mesh shape so what we need to do now is we just need to add that little animation in there so underneath our particle update press plus and now we're going to use a force but we're going to use a curl force noise this is going to generate a nice little swirl for us now by default it's going to have this little error and this is because everything inside this um, niagara system 
has to be ordered in a certain way so that things happen in a specific order. If you just click fix issue, boop, it will rearrange that for you without any problem. Now, if we pop this up to 1000 strength and give this, uh, if we apply it and compile it and then head into our system, we should see it start flicking around. Here we go, you can see, he's, are we on the nasty? We are on orbit. There he is, he's over there. So you can see he starts as a guy and then it bursts him. Okay, now the higher the frequency, the more directions it's going to fly in. So if we put the frequency up to 10 and apply this and then head over to our system, you can see it just kind of bursts in all sorts of directions. You kind of lose a little bit of the, the nice swirliness. So the lower the number, the more swirly you're going to get. I like 0.2. There you go. You see that we get this nice swirl and flick here. Ready for it? Here it comes. Wee swell and flick. It's really nice. Looks kind of cool. Tasty. Now we don't want that to blow up straight away. We want there to be a little bit of a delay. So let's see. Hmm. What do we want? We need our our life. Do, 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 do. Our lifetime of our particle. Now we want these all to last the same amount of time. I'm going to pop these to a five seconds. So now it's all going to take a little bit longer to do its thing but they're going to last for five seconds each. Now this is under set variables, particles start lifetime. You can just search and it will highlight and then you'll be able to find it a lot easier. What we're going to do is we're just going to give this a bit of a color. Where's that color gone? There he is. Oop. Stop you. Get off. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to double click or we'll right click, add key to all curves and we can place these over at the beginning, although we've just lost them now. There we are. What we're going to do is click these little dots here with the little swirly thing, and that's going to let us open up this nice little curve editor. So what we can do here is you can see we've got the alpha. They're slowly disappearing over time, and you can see that that's actually happening here. But what we can do is we can change our color. If we double click and drag these around, let's make these nice and bright like so or actually I want them the other way around I want them more blue to match what we had at the beginning see here we've got this nice blue and then it fades out over time <clears throat> excuse me we'll press ok close that curve down and drop this down now we're going to want to do the same thing with our curl noise now by default we don't have um, a curve available to us so we're going to click this little drop down and we're just going to search for curve and you can see we get float from curve Boop. and then we can actually have this nice little over the time curve. We'll bring up our curve emitter. Now I'm just going to hide all the colors so we only have our strength curve. And what we're going to do is we're going to say at one, we want the full 1000. So you can see it does its thing there. And we'll add a new key to the strength and we'll just say at point, Mm, let's see, point 0.2, we want the value to be 0. So it's going to have a small delay and then it's going to fly around. Compile and apply. And that should be working over here in our system as well. Yay! And it is. And if we were to close this down, we drop our system in. You can see it works in our world as well. So, how do we get our character to be able to spawn these? Well, if we open this up. We already have it all set here, but we're going to remake it again for you just so we can see it. I'm going to say on keyboard E, always the default that I use, and we'll just delete it from down here. You don't need to make any sort of reference to the actual emitter. What we're going to do is we're going to say spawn system, and you can see it will already select a Niagara for us, and we're going to spawn system attached. Our system template, we're just going to drag, well, oh, actually, has that dragged it in? Yeah. So we'll take our system here, or you can search for it in your little dropdown. I've got so many there that are just old, broken references. <laughs> we'll grab our mesh, drag this down, pop it in the attached to component. Now, the location of rotation, what we want to do is from mesh, get world, transform, right click, split the pin. Location into location, rotation into rotation, compile. Make sure that's not attached still. It's not. Cool. Now when we press play, if we run around and we press E, it will spawn them exactly where our characters are.
which is really cool. Now, because this is spawning them based on tri-coordinates, you notice here that on his chest piece and his fingers are particularly more dense. Uh, this is because the mesh there is a denser mesh, so it's getting more particles in those areas. But this is going to work better on a mesh that has a very... Uh, a very even wireframe, uh, but if the topology is good, then you should be fine for it. We, and you can see here they're just exploding. Now, this isn't using as many particles as we were using in the original little um, little demo at the beginning. But what we can do is we can open up the system. We can say, tell you what, I actually want ten thousand particles to spawn. And compile and save. Press play. Press E. And there we go. Much more of them. And they swirl around. So there you go, guys. The first little bit that we've done in Niagara. It's quite a cool little effect. And you can see it's actually really, really satisfying once you get it going. Um, hopefully some of you guys will have found that useful. Um, and you'll find a use for this in your project. And no doubt some of you are going to be able to, to edit this to suit you in any way. Let's see how, how laggy we can get the engine going. Whoosh. In fact, I found that I only really like the engine too bad once I've got a million or more articles on the screen, which is really tasty. Whoosh. But there we go. There we go. Um, hopefully, some of you guys will find that useful. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.